Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Come stand with us and sing, Blessed Be Your Name. participant training sessions in March, one on the 3rd and one on the 10th. We ask that everyone who attended last sessions attend again as some things have changed. Stay after, sir, stay after the service for either session, both are the same, and see what it's all about. There will also be a deacon meeting next Sunday, 2:24 after service. All current deacons must attend, and it is open to anyone who is interested in becoming a deacon. 
the Holland University Theater is presenting Fun House, a play based on lesbian cartoonist Allison I don't know, I can't pronounce her last name, so <laughs> anyway, it's about her life on February 20 through 24. More information is available in the Welcome Center on our Facebook page. Please check the News and Notes session section on your bulletin for detail, details on these more and upcoming events. Sharing the peace in the early days of Christianity, Christians were often persecuted and had to meet in secret. Once there, they would greet each other. So happy to be in a safe place. We continue that tradition today. The peace of Christ can come in the form of a hug, a handshake, a high five, or a wave across the room. If you haven't already done so, this is the time this is also the time to write in the book at the welcome table any prayer request you'd like to read aloud. The peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Go love on somebody. this morning I will read the light print and if you will respond and we will read actually together in the bold print uh, this morning blessed are those who trust in God who delight to meditate on God's law we long to hear the word of God and let the word of God blessed are all who seek the realm of God who hunger to find meaning in their lives we intend to give our best to our Creator, bearing fruit in all we say and do. Blessed are the ones who serve God with joy, who risk all they have in faithfulness and hope. We come now to worship and find new life, to receive healing and empowerment for our journey. Let's stand again and sing, Lead on, O King Eternal. <coughs>
And Travis's sister had back surgery and she's having some complications. Okay. Travis's sister had back trouble and having some complications and two of the kids, one had tubes in their ears and one had their tonsils out. Those boys have their hands full. <laughs> Another one. Please. Um... Continued prayers for my mother. She is in Guggenheimer uh, Health Center and Rehab in Lynchburg. And so just continued prayers that she continues to get well. Had my dad in the emergency room twice this week. And uh, so just prayers for my parents, please. Prayers for Richard's parents. Anyone else? Patty? I have a great daughter. Haley, Patty's great goddaughter, having tonsils out. Yes? Prayers for my partner, Luke, down in Tennessee. He has some doctor's appointments this week. His partner, Luke, in Tennessee, has a doctor's appointment this week. I see another hand. Yes? teachers and bus drivers yep. and other people who work in schools it's a long time between Christmas break and spring break <laughs> <laughs> I remember those days and that was many 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 years ago hallelujah how about unspoken something you didn't want to say out loud or write down but you'd like somebody to pray about this week look around see that sleeve see that watch that hand and that comes to your mind that's your blessing to pray for that person would you pray with me? Loving God, we know that you care about each and every part of our lives. You care about parts of our lives we don't even know. Things going on in the background we don't even know. And you're already there with us before we ever get there. Be with all the folks who are having medical appointments this week and surgeries and healing from surgeries. Be with those who have aging parents like Richard ongoing issues to take care of there. We praise you for the people that come to this church on a regular basis. We praise you for the people that pray for this church on a regular basis. We ask that you help us to continue presenting the message of God's inclusive love, the message that there is a way to live life that's worth living. Continue to bless us in our worship service today. May all that comes out here today, our voices, our expressions on our face, everything that's done, bring honor and glory to you so that people will not only see church on the door, but see, feel, and hear church in our midst. In your name we pray. Amen. Alrighty, so now we've come to the time in our service where um, we collect offering. Um, I was trying to decide what I wanted to say here, but um, what comes to mind is Jesus calling his followers during his Sermon on the Mount, calling them a city on a hill, um, saying that their light cannot be hidden and that we're supposed to shine that light before all people so that they can see those works and glorify God in heaven. And I really believe we are a great shining light here, not just in Southeast and Roanoke, but our denomination all over the world. Uh, but part of shining that spiritual light is keeping the physical lights on and making sure we're able to pay our staff and be able to have the resources to um, to really share God's love with, with those around us. So I just encourage you to, um, to give as you're able, even if that's just a touch on the plate, to bless it so that God would multiply what we give. Uh, ushers can come forward.
the opportunity to come together and worship in your name. I pray that this is a pleasing offering um, to you. I just ask that you would be with these gifts and multiply them as you see fit so that we can further your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. The scripture for today is from Luke chapter 6, verses 17 through 26 from the Message Bible. Coming down off the mountain with them, he stood on a plain surrounded by disciples and was soon joined by a huge congregation from all over Judea and Jerusalem, even from the seaside towns of Tyre and Sidon. They had come both to hear him and to be cured of their ailments. Those disturbed by evil spirits were healed. Everyone was trying to touch him. So much energy surging from him, so many people healed. Then he spoke, you're blessed when you've lost it all. God's kingdom is there for the finding. You're blessed when you're ravenously hungry. Then you're ready for the messianic meal. You're blessed when the tears flow freely. Joy comes with the morning. Count yourself blessed every time someone cuts you down or throws you out. Every time someone smears or blackens your name to discredit me. What it means is that the truth is too close for comfort and that person is uncomfortable. You can be glad when that happens. Skip like a lamb if you like, for even though they don't like it, I do. And all heaven applauds. And know that you are in good company. My preachers and witnesses have always been treated like this. But it's trouble ahead if you think you have it made. What you have is all you'll ever get. And it's trouble ahead if you're satisfied with yourself. Yourself will not satisfy you for long. And it's trouble ahead if you think life's all fun and games. There's suffering to be met and you're going to meet it. There's trouble ahead when you live only for the approval of others, saying what flatters them, doing what indulges them. Popularity contests are not truth contests. Look how many scoundrel preachers were approved by your ancestors. Your task is to be true, not popular. As part of Black History Month, I've been sharing with you each week one of the leaders in our denomination of color. And they usually start out telling you their name, but I'm going to tell you this person's story a little bit first. If I'd had a little white purse, <laughs> I would have said, picture this. Remember Sophia, how um, Fopion? Yeah. Picture this. A young African-American boy growing up in Troy, Alabama. Had what he called a working poor family. Just a generation away from sharecroppers. Four room house. He was the youngest of 14 <coughs> children. Parents didn't graduate from high school, but they always insisted that their kids get an education. Went to his high school counselor to talk about college and loans and scholarships, and the counselor said, You know, none of your siblings went to college. You'd probably be best staying here in Troy and being a clerk at the store where you're working now. The best you can ever hope to is to stay with that company. Thankfully, this man did not follow that advice. Joined the Navy, served honorably, went to college, got his bachelor's degree, then went to the Episcopal School of Divinity and got his master's degree, and then went on and earned his doctorate. I heard him speak once and he said, I think I want to find that counselor <laughs> and talk to her. This person is Reverend Dr. Robert Griffin. He's the executive pastor at Sunshine Cathedral in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. He's one of my really good buds. He was a pastor at Hagerstown. He founded that church and he's several other churches. He's been on every kind of committee you can imagine at MCC. He's one of the most down to earth and I'll tell you a little personal story. At MCC General Conference, the board, the uh, business meetings are long and boring. And boring. And I developed a little game to play. I would take a bag of Hillman Hills. 
and if things were really exciting i'd eat the red and the yellow ones if things were really boring and eat the brown and the green ones and the blue ones i ate when it was over with well robert saw me eating those one day and asked my little system and so from then on whenever i'm in a meeting where he might be i share m and m's in fact one of my members in charlotte once took him a bag of m and m's but i'll tell you his story to tell you that god had greater things in store than that counselor thought and at any point in this time robert could have said i quit been through some rough times at MCC, but he's still here. And I hope one day you get to meet him. I know Richard's met him, Joanna's met him, I don't know if anyone else has or not, but he is just a delightful, delightful man. Uh, if you go to MCC New York and look at their videos, you'll see the sermon he gave that I took part of this from. If you read this in the King James Version, you'd be going, I thought he said that in Matthew. And in Matthew, I thought he was sitting on a mountain. Now he's down on the plains. Is the Bible wrong? People use that. You know, <laughs> Jesus was not just a one-sermon person, but there were certain things I think he wanted to make sure everybody heard. So I'm sure he preached some of the same sermons in different places. I have a friend, Dale Riddle, who's an evangelist. I knew he and his wife at Bluefield College, and whenever Dale was preaching somewhere, I liked to go hear him. And I would write my Bible what he preached on in the scripture. I went to hear him one time, and about 10 years later, I went to hear him somewhere else, and he started reading the scripture, and I looked, I thought, oh, we've heard this before. <laughs> same scripture, same title, and afterwards I told him, he said, only you, only you would keep up with that. Jesus has come down from the mountain or come over, whatever, he's on a flat place, and again, people are crowding in because they're so hungry to hear his word. They're so hungry to hear this new way of life. And maybe some of you have been that way before. If you grew up in a church where you only heard hellfire and damnation, or you only heard things like that, and it was great when you found a church where you didn't hear that. You may hear it sometimes. But you didn't hear that, but you heard about a, lo a loving and a joyful God. So Jesus comes down and he gives these things that seem so opposite. <coughs> You know, that happens a lot in the Gospels. A lot of what Jesus teaches is what I call the upside-down Gospel, the topsy-turvy Gospel. You read it and you go, I must have read that wrong. That just doesn't make any sense. But Jesus was telling the people that it was time to find God's world, God's life, the way of being with God. A new day is coming. You have to remember, if you put it in context, these people have been waiting for centuries for the Messiah. They just kept going to temple, doing what they were supposed to do, doing the sacrifices, but every once in a while they remember Isaiah and some of the other places where they were promised that a Messiah was coming. And then he says some of the strangest things. He says, you're blessed when you're hungry. And he doesn't just say hungry. In the Message Bible it said ravenously hungry. That hungry, you know, the, the, in English there's comparative and superlative or whatever the next one is. This is the EST. This is when you're absolutely starving. Not like you are right now thinking, how long is this going to be? When do we get to eat lunch? But people, he says, when you're hungry, starving, when you're ready for God's meal. Some of us aren't ready to hear what God wants us to do in our lives. Some of us aren't ready. We just kind of want to come and visit with people, and that's good, and that's nice. But when you're really hungry, be somewhere where the message is being served. He says, you're blessed when the tears flow freely. I've had people come in here and say, why are there tissues on every pew in this church? Some of you remember the first time you came to an MCC. The first time you heard that God loved you. The first time you looked around and saw people who were welcoming you. And you needed those tissues. But Jesus, I love how Jesus shows he was a good boy in Sunday school or Sabbath school because he says joy comes in the morning. And that's from Psalm 30. He says there's something coming, something happening. He was speaking to people that were ready to hear. And you always hear Jesus preaching to those who are to be consoling and supporting the disadvantaged. He didn't go to the temple and try to talk to the Pharisees a lot. They didn't want to hear what he had to say was going to mess up their system. Don't confuse me with the facts, he might even have said. 
But we see here that the that blessed life is that in-between life. I love the last line of the scripture when it says, trouble is coming. Trouble is coming. Face it. Trouble is coming. Get through it. In a song one time, a gospel song, about how Jesus faced life, embraced life, and conquered death. The God of the in-between times, the Alpha and the Omega. Think about some of the best times you've ever had. Especially the best spiritual time you've ever had. Remember some of those mountaintops? Calvary General Conference 2005 is one of my mountaintops. Do you remember how great that was? Now, think about that other time. And nothing seemed to be going right. And the pit had to be reached up to touch the bottom. You know what? Jesus says, I'm with you all through those. I'm with you in the midst of all of those. I think he also shares that most people aren't going to understand if you start living a Jesus world life. People aren't going to understand it. People don't understand why you would bother to get up this morning drive down from Blacksburg, drive in from Callaway, come all this distance. Why in the world do you do that? Don't you know it's raining? All right, now I don't have to separate you two. <laughs> he said Salem, and I said it's from <laughs> Salem does not count as a long way to drive. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> but he says there's trouble ahead there's trouble ahead and, and you know Sandra got a little choked up when she was reading the scripture because we, we've been there many of us have been there when it says people are going to smear and blacken your name and discredit you it means the truth is too close for comfort if we choose individually and collectively to live a Jesus life that's going to bother some people. It might bother the people you used to run with. And I don't mean jogging. It might bother the people that at work you sneak around and do things like fingers for Jesus, we used to call it. They might not understand that you've found a better way, a happier way. And then, I love how Jesus says, and don't think you're all that special. I don't think you're all that special. All the preachers and prophets have had this happen. When you get closer to the truth, that mirror reflects on other people and bothers them big time. Yourself will not satisfy you for long. I don't think we're called to lead an uncomfortable, disgruntled, confused life. But I also know that we can't get too satisfied. We can't get too satisfied. I love the fact that when I study the Bible, and I've been in Sunday school and church since I was three years old, I love when I read something, I go, I never knew that was there before. I never understood that. I'm forever going to Joanna and saying, do you know that? that, that, that and she goes, no, but now I do. We can't get satisfied. We have to keep growing. We have to keep growing. We have to keep growing. <laughs> I was really struck by one of the phrases in here when Jesus said, there's trouble ahead, you, and if you live only for the approval of others, saying what flatters them, doing what indulges them. And he even talks about the other preachers that have gotten into trouble. I was very bothered this week on lots of levels when I read in the paper about the Roman Catholic Church finally confronting what's been going on for years and years and years. Sort of confronting it. And then I look at the paper again, and guess what? Over 200 Southern Baptist leaders have been called for. You say, well, they're human like all of us. Yes, they say they are. But when you take this, When you take this, you're committing to a different standard. That's 
not to say that we judge those folks. I will say, though, with MCC, we've had some of our problems, but not that percentage and not that number. Jesus says, don't try to live like those people that you always thought had it right if you see there's a problem there. I'm talking about a new way of life. The teachings of Jesus were so radical, that's why he ended up on the cross. He was rattling the economy. He was rattling the religious thing. He says, don't try to be popular. That's not what it's all about. What's important is to be true. True to yourself. True to the truth you've been taught. And true to the God you serve. Now, I don't know about you, but my toes have curled a little bit during this sermon. Everybody likes to be popular. You know you do. Carol didn't like a singing to her, but she won't really mind it later on. But if the choice is following Jesus or being popular, and we want to have that blessed life, we choose to follow Jesus. Doesn't mean you can't be popular. I love Robert to death, like I was saying. You know, he's very popular in my heart and spirit. But what's important is that he has stayed true. He has stayed true to his calling. You want to have a blessed life? Be ready for things to not make sense as Jesus leads us. If you want to have a blessed life, be willing to look at things differently. Take the challenge. Study. Figure it out. When you come to something, when you're reading the Bible and you think, that just does not make sense. Don't do this. Well, it didn't make sense. I don't need that book. Some of us have done that in the past. Instead, I always say read the paragraph above and the paragraph below. We have this great thing now called Google. Look it up, see what other people think it might have to say. Talk to people who's been in the Word longer than you have. See if they have an understanding about it. Because God is standing on tiptoes, folks, wanting to show us a blessed life. Wanting to show us a life that's not just happy, ha, ha, ha but a blessed, joyful life. A life that makes it worth getting up on a rainy Sunday morning when you'd rather stay home in bed and coming to be with brothers and sisters and hearing the word. Choose to be blessed. Amen.
Remember me and what I taught and showed and led and lived with you. That night he took a cup from the table and he lifted it to heaven and he gave thanks and he blessed it. He said, this is my blood poured out for you as a sign of a new and everlasting covenant. Take and drink of it, each of you. And when you do, remember me. Remember that I faced it. I embraced it. And eventually you'll see that I conquered. Loving God, we ask your blessing on these elders. We ask that they be a reminder for us of your immense, unchanging, beyond death love. And with that love, remind us, comes the ability and the opportunity to be blessed. In your name we pray. Amen. This church and all TC churches around the world will celebrate an open communion, which means that you are welcome to come to the table. You don't have to be a member of this church or any other. When you come to the table, you'll be offered a wafer, dipped in grape juice, uh, and offered a brief blessing. We also have gluten free options available, and we have an option for you to serve yourself if you need that time just with you and God. Please come. The table is prepared. And if you need additional prayer, Rhonda Thorne will be in the back uh, providing us. Let's go.